Hi, this is Dr. Green with the second of three short videos for the snow day of February 13th. This video is on section 14.1, functions of two variables. So a function of two variables is just a function that takes two input variables and gives one output variable. We'll usually think of the output as z. Of course, it's possible for a function to have several input variables and several output variables. That would be a vector function of several variables, but we won't consider them in this chapter. All of our functions will take two or sometimes more real variables as output and give one real number as, out, as sorry, take two or possibly more real numbers as input and give one real number as output. Let's consider the function f of xy equals the square root of xy. For example, if we have the input where x is 3 and y is 12, that gives us the corresponding output of square root of 3 times 12, or 6. And we could plot that point on the x, y, z space using z to be the number 6. Of course, it's easy with graphing software to plot the whole function, but before we do that, let's think a little bit about the properties of our function f. First, I want to consider its domain. Just like with an ordinary function of one dimension, the domain for the domain, we're just looking for the values of the input variables, x and y, that give a real number as output. Since we can't take the square root of a negative number, we need x times y to be greater than or equal to 0. So we need the points x, y to be in the first quadrant or the third quadrant. It can also be written as the set of x's and y's such that x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0, together with a set of points x, y, such that x and y are both less than or equal to 0. And this is what the domain looks like. In order to visualize the function without our 3D graphing software, it's sometimes helpful to look at level curves. So level curves are just the curves where the function is a constant. In other words, the set of points x, y, where f of x, y is k for some constant k. So what are the level curves of f of x, y equals the square root of x, y? Well, for example, the curve where f of x, y is 1 is the set of points where the square root of x, y is 1. In other words, where x times y is 1 or y is 1 over x. Similarly, the set of points where f of x, y is 2 gives us the curve x times y equals 4, or y equals 4 over x, and f of x, y equals 3 gives us a level curve, y equals 9 over x. Let's look at some of these curves on a graph. So I have my mat grapher here, and let me look at my level curves. The first level curve we were talking about where z equals 1. This is the level curve where z equals 2. Here's the level curve where z equals 3. Here's the level curve where my z equals 0. Now, why is it that nothing showed up when I did this level curve? It's because square root of x times y equals 0 happens when x times y equals 0. In other words, when x is 0 or y is 0, and those are just the y-axis and the x-axis, which don't appear on this graph because they're just on top of the axes that are already plotted. We could also plot square root of x times y equals 1 half, which is the same as the equation y equals 1 fourth over x, or square root of x times y equals 1 third, which is the same as y equals 1 ninth over x. As we do this, we can get some sort of sense for the shape of the graph of our function, how it would look in three dimensions where our output our z, is our z, is our height. So I like to think of this kind of like a topographical map, a hiking map, right? And these level curves give me the height of This one is z equals 1, this one's z equals 2, this one's z equals 3. So 
as I hike in this direction, my height is increasing. This is also z equals 1. This here, z equals 2, z equals 3. So I'm going up in this direction too. One thing to look for to understand the shape of a graph is that when the level curves are at equally spaced z values, then the closer together the level curves, the steeper the slope. So you can tell these two curves are one z unit apart. It's steeper to hike up here where the curves are slightly closer together than to hike in this direction where the curves are farther apart. So if I'm going to try to hike and I don't like to go up steep hills, I'm going to look for equally spaced level curves that are as far apart as possible. And you may be familiar with that if you've done a lot of hiking and map reading. Okay, so going back, now that we've seen what the level curves look like, we have some sense that the surface is going up and flaring in this direction and in that direction. So now let's go ahead and look at a three-dimensional graph, which I've drawn here. I've used color to indicate height here. So red is higher and blue is lower. And this is what the graph of the function looks like. Please pause the video and try to match the 3D graphs, the corresponding level curves, and the corresponding equations. So the answers are going to, have to come up next, so please do pause the video and work it out yourself first. Try to do it without using graphing software if you can. All right, so these are the answers that you should have gotten. And I'm going to talk through some of these. For part A, the potato chip looking one, the level curves flare out from the origin. And so this looks like the right level curve pattern. If you notice for a fixed Y, Z seems to be kind of look wavy like a cubic in X. And so it must go with this equation since when you put Y as a constant here, Z is a cubic in X. Part B is a little bit easier because the level curves are clearly concentric circles, which must go with this picture. And since we've got this sort of radial symmetry, anywhere around a circle where like x squared plus y squared is a constant gets the same value of z, this is the only equation that has that radial symmetry. This one looks like it almost does, but because of the x squared y squared out here, we don't quite have level curves at cocentral circles where x squared plus y squared is a constant. Part C looks like the level curve should be approximately cocentric circles, but in, four, in a, a pattern of four. So that goes with this pattern of level curves. The equation that goes with this is not quite so clear to me. There's several equations that have the right kind of even symmetry. Notice for x, when x is positive or negative, we're getting the same z values. When y is positive or negative, we're getting the same z values. In other words, it's sort of like even in x and even in y. If I plug in negative x for x here or negative y for y, I get the same thing. But there's several functions that have that even property. So in order to identify which function, I think it's going to be process of elimination. I'm going to have to eliminate this one and this one first. So I'll leave that for later. Part D, lots of bumps. Looks like this concentric circles. There's definitely some signs going on here in both directions, so it must go with equation 5. Part 5, oh sorry, part E. Um, it looks like there's some kind of oscillating behavior in the x direction, uh, but not in the y direction. The y direction is more parabolic. right? When I fix x I get a parabola. So that's this equation here and these level curves here. And part F looks like concentric circles or maybe ellipses, so it looks like this. And this equation must go with it because when x squared plus 4y squared is a constant, that's an ellipse, shape of an ellipse, that's when z is a constant. And so then by process of elimination, 
um, this one here, level curve picture two is equation two. I think it's great to be able to visualize these surfaces at least somewhat without a graphing software, but I do encourage you to play around with graphing software as well. So I've already been using the Mac Grapher quite a bit. I wanted to mention that there's also another graphing program that I recommend that's available for any computer um, because it's a web program. So this is the 3D Calc Plotter and I have a link to it on the Sakai course wiki towards the top under the first section 12.1. Um, it's pretty easy to use. You can just type in your equations. I've typed in a few of the equations from that matching sheet and you can look at what the graphs look like. Well, that one's kind of boring, but you can play around with that on your own. So I encourage you to use that if you're interested. There's one more topic in section 14.1, functions of three or more variables. To visualize functions of three variables, it can be handy to look at level surfaces, which are the anal analog to level curves for functions of two variables. So level surfaces are just the surfaces where f of x, y, z is constant. Here are two examples for you to try on your own using graphing software for using your visualization skills. Think about what the level surfaces should look like and graph a few level surfaces. And that can give you some sense for what the three-dimensional space formed by this function might look like if you could actually get into four dimensions and get a good look. So pause the video and think about these two examples, and then I'll show you some pictures on MacGrapher. Here are the level surfaces for the first function. And as you can see, they're cocentric spheres. So this function is a higher dimensional analog of a paraboloid. For the second function, the level surfaces are cocentric hyperboloids. Actually, the inner one is a cone and the rest are hyperboloids. Kind of makes a nice layered look. So this is the end of the video for section 14.1. There'll be one more short video on 14.2.